Suzy Ledadem here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad and grateful to God that we are here and we're able to have another moment to share our lives and to impact each other positively. Remember, living positive regardless. Doesn't matter the point at which you are in life, but we rock positivity all the way. Guys, today I'm so excited. I have a guest and he, he, it's a new face to this channel and so I believe new 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 wisdom is coming in <laughs> so keep karibu sana to suzy yule Dem youtube channel okay. here we impact each other positively mm -hmm. i learn from my viewers they learn from me we exchange knowledge mm -hmm. and that's how we grow nice. so karibu sana Asante maybe you introduce yourself to my guys let them know who you are where you come from Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kimberly Kiona Ukiri. I am a recent graduate of Kenyatta University with a bachelor's degree in Gender and Development Studies and a minor in Psychology. Um, you said I should say where I come from. Uh -huh. <laughs> so in terms of where I come from, I don't know if you want Nairobi. Oh, I, I live here in Nairobi and then Kwetu Shago, it should be Kisu. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. so you are a Jabel? Yes, a Jabel. Ah. We are so, we, that side of Baba. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, I Thank like you. that. Eh? And uh, congratulations. Um, she's a young lady who has just completed her studies, meaning she's so fresh with the, the student issues here and there. We've talked here, I've brought here before student in campus and the told us the challenges when they are still in there. I'm glad that we have one who has gone through the whole system and she has completed. Sisi tukiwambia zetu, you feel like eh, hey, memaliza kita, but they might not relate with what we are going through. Yeah. And it's a good season, by the way, to do this video mm -hmm. when uh, we've had our KCSE results out, yeah, yeah. meaning we are having many young people who are well, looking forward to, to joining dream. universities, colleges, and all that. Huh? Yes. Because you know, seko, maisha ilikuwa tofauti kidogo. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Things have been, things have changed. They've changed. Eh? Yes, things it's have not changed. the old way we no, used to no, think. No. And right now, kids are really exposed. Okay, Maliza, form four, they know a lot. Not even form four, okay. class eight. Ah, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, guys, today I want us to talk about um, sexual relationships yes. in campus mm -hmm. and uh, what happens in there. And uh, the reason I want us to discuss this is because I would want I would want our viewers to have a view mm -hmm. of um, what exactly is happening there mm -hmm. and if it should be allowed to continue happening that way or there is a better way that it can be done. It's uh, another time we had that there is an outbreak in Nairobi of gonorrhea. <laughs> Funny enough, I shared with the person who is from a different county, yeah. Nakuru County actually, mm -hmm. and he told me before he announced you were Nairobi, ni vile uko jaya nauziwa, but it's Everywhere. widespread okay. there, yeah. so it's not anything in your So that, that that now calls us all of us because we don't want our student really to come here and yeah, we're experiencing. Yes. Yeah. So now let me ask you: yeah. in campus, do you think kuna relationships in Nairobi ngo uko amani masomo iko uko? <laughs> okay, that that's fine. Because um, you know, in campus already, most people who are joining university are already 18 years and above. So these are people who are considered under the law adults. So most times, even if let's say um, it was supposed to be banned, because we literally can't ban, because now these are people who are adults and they have the right to choose whatever they want to do with their own lives. Mm -hmm. So they, we have campus relationship. I think they're the most rampant at this point. Uh, that's also because, you, you know, before sex was not something that was just given freely. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for men to get sex, they probably had to marry for them to enjoy free sex. Sure. Now that has changed over time. There is so much um, ongoing... I, I don't think they're really, they should be called relationships because mm -hmm. very few relationships from campus actually make it outside campus. And then, considering the fact that you find most university students, when you are a problem, you talk of shago. Mm -hmm. I guess people probably are coming to Nairobi for the first time, but some of them, yeah. and then others were mekuwa huku. So yeah. if assuming these people are dating, moja natoka kitale, mungina natoka busia. You see, when people are going on a break, the relationship ends. Wanarudi. Wanarudi could resume once the semester imeanza. Yeah. And then it's not like so sure that mkirudiana, because remember sometimes universities we go 
because of strike sometimes we don't go for those long holidays but initially the the university calendar we're supposed to have like a five months break yeah, yeah long holiday mm. so in five months you want to tell me this man who's in kitale and this lady who's in lucia uh -huh. is going to be single waiting for them to go back to school mm -hmm. and uh, get back together mm. so most times you find this relationship are just for companionship literally just mm. within the university okay. but i also don't think majority of them mm -hmm. are people who date with the intention of it ending into something probably like marriage okay but more like you know it's just for this time mm -hmm. to tell you because most of them they say um it uh to answer to joy is to figure out in belly wow yes ah yeah. so you were saying there are relationships which you don't know if you want to call them maybe we call them relationships eh? yeah i feel like <laughs> maybe more of situationships uh -huh. but we um, have campus wives you know that wow yeah okay there are ladies who live with their boyfriends mm -hmm. in campus mm -hmm. I, i don't think people know but you know the law states that if you stay with somebody for over six months they should be legally your wife right definitely they come with stay yes that happens a lot in university especially for students who are not living within the hostel okay. i think within the hostel is a bit difficult because of the rules because mm -hmm. there's a particular time a girl should not be in men's hostel there's a particular time a boy should not be found in women's hostel mm -hmm. so i think that prohibits mm -hmm. the whole scenario of where these people are living together even in the hostels mm -hmm. but for those people who are staying outside school and they actually have houses mm -hmm. we have what we call the campus wives so mm -hmm. they take care of the needs of the man literally in all sense that is from <laughs> cooking cleaning you know going to class and all the other things sexual as well wait a minute yes you've gone to school yeah and because I, i was even wondering when you said there are relationship my question would have been that i'm thinking do they involve sex absolutely and now when you're telling me wives eh? yes you're really living with someone yeah and uh, you're saying this relationship are supposed to be for 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 let's see how it will be yes so it's not anything for future and now we're already living together let's take a scenario we have a young man and a young lady who's just cleared high school mm -hmm. right so these people are joining campus you know there's whole you know when you're out there before you join campus there's a whole hype about mm -hmm. university yes. and what really intrigues most people who have not really joined campus yet mm -hmm. is the fact that there's so much freedom that you get to enjoy yeah. in campus especially if you're living within the premises of the university mm -hmm. or you and then you'll be living in Nairobi there's no parent to continuously monitor your movements mm -hmm. here yeah. and there yes. so this is a guy who's come into university they are enjoying a freedom that they've not had probably the whole entire life mm -hmm. so you know when you give people options they're definitely going to explore options sure, sure. so now this is a young man living in the hostel this is a university where you are meeting ladies left right and center why would they explore so you think the reason as to why this is happening is because of the freedom and managed freedom and managed the... freedom mm -hmm. and then in the african culture sex particularly is a topic that is not it's very hard for us to hear our parents talk to us about sex mm -hmm. maybe now it's it's changed mm -hmm. but even when the way they say it is still quoted you know they're not going to outwardly tell you know when you go to campus people are having sex you're gonna meet a man you're gonna meet a girl mm -hmm. you might be interested things might go like this like this because i think that probably most young ladies they are who goes to university who are virgins mm -hmm. but probably by the end of the first year mm -hmm. that's a story for another day <laughs> <laughs> i would want to know if you think we still have people who will come and go through the whole system and not engage into this relationship unless ni mtu wa kanisa first of all let's define what sex is because mm -hmm. sex people assume sex is just the penetration the act of penetration between a man and a woman mm -hmm. there are people who have not had that penetration but they've done everything else now we have what we call the oral sex you know we have all types of things that people explore I don't really had um that physical penetration between a man and a woman but then they've done all the you know what we call the romancing and what the youth call like kudarana and all that so that has happened but then they've not had now the physical sexual encounter where there is penetration and the organs are interacting and all that so right now i feel it's a bit difficult even for a lady who's not had penetrational sex probably they've already experienced all the other type of things they have not just done the penetration sex mm -hmm. before there were things that were not so common like okay well now today hiv is uh, 
yeah, unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> and again, now other things are getting introduced day by day. Mm-hmm. We didn't have, uh, we didn't, some of the diseases that we are seeing today that are very common, we didn't have them. Mm-hmm. So actually, it is so, it is, should be of so much concern of us mm-hmm. if these things continue. Mm-hmm. So what do you think we could do before these girls come to this campus? Mm-hmm. What, what do you think is the major thing that is causing the young girls to feel they need to be wives in campuses? So first of all, um, let me say how sexual orientation for, for most people, consider the fact that we come from uh, cultures where sex is a taboo topic, yeah? most parents avoid having those discussions with their children. I kind of think exposure would go a long way if parents were just open enough. You know, when you already have an 18 year old, that's an adult. Mm-hmm. So there are things you might not tell them. What parents forget is, if you do not tell your child these things, somebody else is going to tell your child these things. It might be the social media because we live in an era of information. So it might not be you, it could be the social media, which is somebody else's opinion. So which means even the information they're going to get is not factual. Mm-hmm. It might not be factual. It could be, it could, it could not be. Yeah. But then you see, by the time you are realizing probably the damage has already been done. That's why most parents realize that their kids were having sex when they get pregnant. You understand? That's when you're like, oh, you mean she even knew about sex? She's been having sex until she got pregnant. And that's when a parent is like, when did you, when did she did she even start having sex in the first place? But I also think uh, issues of teenage pregnancies, these uh, young girls get because right now we have so many people giving birth, M- many young girls giving birth out of wedlock. They are not married. They do not even have the men who have pre- impregnated them in the picture in the first place. Yeah. So we have a society raising kids without both parents, and that also has its own effect in the long run. Mm-hmm. But I think one thing that can actually be done to curb this type of, I don't want to call it maintenance, but I feel like sexual education should be something that should be part of a curriculum right now. Okay. So so that most times they are both genders. And then I feel like the issue of pregnancy has always been solved from one angle, mm-hmm. the lady side. Uh-huh. You know, for a woman to get pregnant, she needs a man. Mm-hmm. So we've always been advocating for educating the girl child, educating the girl child, educating the girl child. Uh-huh. Then we forget that it's, it's a man who's making a woman pregnant. What if we decide that we're going to teach men the consequences of having unprotected sex and bringing in kids into the world that they're actually not ready to be fathers to? Uh-huh. Because if you have a son who lacks a father figure, uh-huh. then when they grow up as adults, they are going to probably also have their own issues yeah. then they are going to marry somebody mm-hmm. get get a child with them and then pass the whole issues that they have you know what to call probably the childhood traumas to this child this child is going to grow up mm-hmm. be a father again and pass the whole so it becomes a repetitive circle all around mm-hmm. so maybe if we had information and accurate information i don't feel like the site is honest enough mm-hmm. to admit that sometimes we need both the men's perspective of issues uh-huh. and we need the women's perspective of issues. Because a campus, for me to be a wife, I need to be a wife to a man. Okay. You understand? True, true. So I cannot true. be a wife to myself. Yes. And for me to be a wife to a man, what's even the relation that I have with myself as a lady? Mm-hmm. To feel free enough to go and be somebody else's wife in campus. Mm-hmm. And most times I know these people will not marry me. The thing is, most of these young girls are naive. They have no information, you know? Mm-hmm. These are people who probably have never been shown an affection by a man. Mm-hmm. So the first guy that comes through and shows them affection, they feel like this is it. And then they go in there with everything. Mm -hmm. Before she knows it, she's pregnant, she's dropping out. And one thing that is actually unfortunate is a a lady's life is more likely to stop, but Mm -hmm. a dude's life. You know, if a guy today in pregnancy, there's nothing in his life that changes. It is for me to stop my studies and, you know, wait. Mm -hmm. And that's why we might find many girls joining, Uh but probably most girls do not end up finishing school. Uh Yes. That's what I was talking about, graduating with other things. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're graduating with three degrees. You know, you have a child, you have a husband, and you have the degree. Imagine. <laughs> do you think our do you think parents like uh, do they know? Do are we aware? Is it because we think we know what is happening yes. here? Do you think we really have the true picture of what I is know. happening in the campus? I know. Uh, no. I tell myself all the time if parents were to be shown what we uh-huh. The young people probably did in campus or still do mm-hmm. in campus. I think most of most of our parents would dishonor, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, because the fact that most parents lock us in 
I don't want to say lock us in per se, but the fact that we do not have that freedom. Uh-huh. So when I go out there, and for the first time I'm feeling, I don't have a parent who's going to call me, umu, uko api, sangapi, sain, sangapi, jarudi, nyumbani. I'm just going to do my things. Si endangi sherehe nyumbani, na I am able to go to sherehe. I cannot drink alcohol at home. Now I'm in a place, you know, like you, we used to have like a whole something uh, where they sell alcohol in the middle of the school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, ujai kunyo pombe, you have friends who are drinking. You go, that's when even people adopt new behavior that they didn't have before because of the freedom now to explore. Mm-hmm. And that's because now you are feeling I'm no longer having that restriction. Mm-hmm. So, ni kama mtu minyalikuwa mefungiwa kapua freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's when people say, they misuse it so that when they go back home, ask the bam leka. You know, like, let me when we come back home now we are the children yeah. that our parents think that we are. They want. The, the exactly. children, they want. Yes, they want. And uh-huh. then now when we are out here now we become ourselves. I tell you to say that our friends know us better than our parents. Wow. Mm-hmm. Most people that we interact with mm-hmm know most things about your kid that than you the parent mm-hmm. would know because i'm more likely to tell my friends the truth because i do even some of these things with them mm-hmm. but i would not be drinking alcohol with my dad would i True. definitely not mm-hmm. would i come and tell my dad you know what i'm having sex mm-hmm. of course not mm-hmm. in fact w- most parents want to have a relationship around a conversation around a relationship when now we are ready to get married that's when i'll be like bringing a dude home mm-hmm. what if they adopted like if i'm having a boyfriend what if i introduce my boyfriend to my parents. That's why you see when there's sometimes campus deaths that occur from you know f- uh, failed relationships. Mm-hmm. Parents even wonder oh, they, my my daughter had had a boyfriend because mm-hmm. they didn't even know that this fr- their daughter had a boyfriend. You know because of the whole picture of uh, you know our parents, African parents, and the way. Yani just we see you and we see drama. <laughs> And, and then we want Do you think to as a young lady you would want that open book where you were able to tell your parents that I'm having a boyfriend, I'm living with my boyfriend? Do you think it's it's you young girls thinking you so you mean you need a pri- your private life? Do you think you'd want that? I, I think for me I would want to come to tell okay, at the beginning my hey, me my mom was very strict. I was trauma. I don't know when I even hey motor fire. Mm-hmm. But then I think as I grew older I started just introducing those things to her. Pole pole, like one thing at a time. You know, like when I had my boyfriend I told my mom. When I when I was in relationship I told my mom. So at, at the beginning I was just testing waters and I was just trying to see how she gonna oh, react yeah. because I knew who you mm-hmm. hey and as, and as I got disowned the same way <laughs> the very day and but then with uh-huh. time I think uh-huh. you know I feel like she became more comfortable knowing that there was this person uh-huh. than me lying that there wasn't anyone because I feel like the fact that I was pretending there wasn't anyone maybe when the parents start wondering uh, is right now we live in an area where sexual orientation is a big deal like not everyone is straight you know mm-hmm. so yeah. you also when you're not saying certain things your parents will start getting worried ama ni waile pande ama huko pande you know so and for for most African parents that's still also an issue mm-hmm. but um at least uh, I, I think I would I'd honestly encourage especially mothers mm-hmm. To have those type of conversation with their daughters and fathers to have those kind of conversation with their sons but i also think it's also a good time that you the young one mm. you come up in uh, express yourself to your parents because uh, i think we've done much about now parents accommodating the children but are these children accommodatable eh? the question is uh-huh. are parents approachable that's the thing are parents okay. approachable because i don't think there's any child who do want an understanding parent mm-hmm. who has an understanding parent and would not take advantage mm-hmm. of the fact that i have an understanding parent you understand yes. but then most of us do not want our parents to find out mm-hmm. because we know the consequences mm-hmm. if they found out i'm doing this mm-hmm. what is the likelihood what is their reaction so most kids okay. would prefer mm-hmm. they should okay. their parents yeah. should never find out mm-hmm. about this thing completely not because we do not want to share but we don't feel like our parents are the people would want to have those type of conversations because you might not look at your child the same way true you understand true. Yes. Mm. so i'd like if you could distort your perspective of who, of who we are we want you to see us as your innocent child that you raised and yeah mm. so we become we remain yes. to be those kids yes. now do you do you feel is it how comfortable is it because the idea the reason as to why you went to school you went for studies yes. not only for do you think is it healthy have you found it are they are, are, are they happy are these girls and boys who are dating are they happy how is the environment 
them themselves, let's forget about the period, they don't know what is happening. Mm. But in this institution where I went to school, are people happy there? I think I I I I I think they are for for a period of time. You know, yeah. for every relationship, kuna kwanga na watu call the honeymoon phase. Yes. You know, and it, this is also a phase. Because mm-hmm. I feel like we, if all of us said we're not gonna date in campus, and we just move from campus, who are we going to date? Because the people who met literally in the university and they maintained their relationship all through, they got married and read a lot. But f- uh, recently, most times the people you date, especially there's this saying that your first love most times doesn't end up to be your your husband. Mm-hmm. It's just like a, a phase where you have to go through this and then learn from it and then get to the next person in line. But I, I, I if you look, I don't know if you've ever watched these shows, the loyalty test. Have sure. you ever watched them? Yes. And yes. you see most of them are campus students. Yes. And in most of the times when they're being sanitized, I think 90% of those cases, these people are always cheating. Yes. Like there's always a spouse who's having somebody else, there's always a sp- spouse who's doing something they shouldn't be doing. And that just gives you the whole idea about youth thinking that these relationships are probably not serious. For now, it's not something that I should be committing myself to because somebody's thinking, ah, I'm still young, I'm barely 25. Why would I be competing to one man? And this guy probably is also broke. And right now we know most ladies would not prefer dating a guy without money. So there are so many dynamics to why these relationships do not work. Just not the fact that they're in the campus, but also the kind of lifestyle and what these ladies are also looking for in the men. Are they getting them from these men in university? And what the men are also looking for in women? Can they be able to get that from that lady he or she is dating within the campus? How is the faithfulness level in this relationship? Hey, yeah, yeah. Are they committed to one partner? Right now, honestly, faithfulness, and it's not even in campus alone, like generally with everyone. <laughs> it's, it's a bit wanting. Because <laughs> then also I feel like that's also because what, what, what is faithfulness? That's what I think. Because you know, there's somebody who believes cheating for me is sleeping with another person. Yes. If I do anything in between, it's not considered cheating. Mm-hmm. So they would flirt, mm-hmm. they would encourage other dudes, mm-hmm. they would do everything else out there with these men. But then as long as they do not have sex with them, they are not cheating. Not cheating. And then there's a person, just even by the fact that you're flirting with another man mm-hmm. or another lady, you're already cheating. So the, uh, in, in terms of if you want to speak about faithfulness, then it would depend on the person who's uh, defining this faithfulness because I don't think there's just one angle under which we can say this is what faithfulness looks like because faithfulness looks different to every person in a relationship. What are the risks that are involved in this uh, in this relationship, in this campus relationship? What are the risks that are involved? Well, first of all, we've seen uh, in the media killings of these young couples, like, they end up killing each other. You know, sometimes what people assume to be love could be infatuation. And infatuation is so strong that you feel like, I, I cannot live without this human being. And even wonder how, how are you surviving this whole time before you met this amazing human being. And now this human being is telling you, yo, it is over. You go your way. I go my way. And some people do not know how to deal with rejection. There are men who do not know how to deal with rejection. There are ladies who do not know how to deal with rejection. And you find they end up, in a moment of anger, they actually react in ways that could end up into a murder case. Mm-hmm. You understand? That's one of the uh, disadvantages. The other disadvantage is right now we have sexually transmitted infections and diseases. We have the outbreak of gonorrhea, as you were stating earlier, in Nairobi. Uh, that already tells you that most people are having sex that is not protected. Because if I remember my biology clearly, men are carriers, and uh, this uh, when they have sex with a woman, the manifestation happens faster in a woman than in a man, right? If I was protecting myself, I shouldn't be able to to infect the next person. But that clearly shows that people are having unprotected sex. But I also have so many friends of mine who got pregnant in university. I know right now with the whole women empowerment things. Women are encouraged to go to school even when they're pregnant and it's not a big deal and it's still working for most women. But then at the end of the day, how does this 
uh, affect the life of these young women who are probably the breadwinners of their families or they're the first children in the lineage to have attended university and now you are the first one you've gone to university and gotten pregnant and you're coming back to tell your people and it's in the first year like you're pregnant the type of disappointment that your family feels you know and probably it will change your relationship on how you relate with your parents for the rest of your life and you might find even the person that impregnated this young lady or young women they're nowhere to be seen and for them their life continues as if nothing happened they move on to impregnate the second one and the third one wow. and the cycle continues wow <laughs> <laughs> this campus boys that are killing girls and girls killing boys eh? now why do you, because now i i want to say that we don't want to pretend eh? because it has been said maybe it's because unfaithfulness and all that eh? what is it that you think that is making young girls especially not be uh, committed to one relationship they are hooping from one relationship or not even hooping keeping all of them they are keeping more than one relationship what could this what what is the problem okay right now um you see when we were young most ladies we were taught you go to your school uh, you'll get a rich man who will marry you get married you know give birth and your life will be sweet uh, happily ever after mm -hmm. right and then right now the dynamics of things have changed and most young men in the university they're probably also just depending on their parents or they are hustling here and there to survive so they barely have enough for themselves and this young man has also gone ahead to pick a lady now in ladies mindset we are we've been raised to believe that a man should be taking care of the woman mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so this man has a has a girlfriend in campus who expects her hair to be done they want to make their nails who wants to wear all the stylish you know dressings that yes. are in the university mm -hmm. this lady expects that they should be going out with mm -hmm. a dude at least once in the weekend you know somewhere nice and all that yes. because you know what also happens with women we kind of discuss a lot what goes on in our relationship with our friends yes. so you have a friend who probably has a stable boyfriend who's not even in campus mm -hmm. who takes care of your needs mm -hmm. and now you i have a campus guy who i want to be able to take care of my needs mm -hmm. the same way that guy who's not in the university is taking care of my friend's needs yes. so i'm putting a lot of pressure on this guy mm -hmm. so once i see the guy is not yielding mm -hmm. to my pressure yes. of uh, an expectation of what he should be doing yes. i'll probably go out and look for another guy i yeah. might retain him because i maybe this is the guy i love uh, but i might decide to date another one mm -hmm. for the case of you know i want money i mm -hmm. want a good lifestyle yes. and most young people honestly mm -hmm. we want a good lifestyle that we cannot be able to work for and uh -huh. afford uh -huh. so we want it easy yes. so most of young people right now mm -hmm. they prefer to engage there's so many women who date men for money yeah. like right now one thing that actually makes a man desirable and attractive to a woman mm -hmm. is the fact that he has money mm -hmm. most men who in fact if you ask single guys mm -hmm. why are you single mm -hmm. most of them will tell you i'm still looking for money uh -huh. so you wonder why should money be a prerequisite uh -huh. to a relationship uh -huh. but then it's because of also how women have made it if you do not have money mm -hmm. i have no reason to, to be, be your girlfriend, girlfriend. Uh -huh. yes and i have no reason for us to be together what are we talking about uh -huh. so if i'm with you i'm probably having another guy who's financing my lifestyle mm -hmm. you understand yes and so that when i go to campus everybody's thinking you know i'm living the life yes that i should be living mm -hmm. and then we say you know i'm baby girl i need the baby girl treatment mm -hmm. and all those kind of you know uh treatment that we need these days because of that and how many men are actually in the bracket of being able to sustain and provide for a woman very few yeah. so you find the same guys who are sustaining this girl's lifestyle are the same people having sex with multiple girls mm -hmm. because it is not many men who have this because why do you expect a campus boy to be rich to honestly be unless he comes from a very rich family you know yeah. we are not being realistic when you want a young boy who's 18 19 20 mm -hmm. to be rich to extent where they can afford to sustain your whole lifestyle mm -hmm. and this is a person who also went to school mm -hmm. i saw me pia at tengeneza maisha yake the same way this lady has been brought here by the parents so it is unrealistic and unexpected of women to what really baffles me most time is <laughs> We expect a man to have money and it should be okay for me not to have money. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that they do not have, mm -hmm. but women believe it's not their role to use their money when they have a man. Because there's so okay. many men mm -hmm. and women mm -hmm. who live together, even married couples, mm -hmm. who the wife is earning, mm -hmm. the man is earning, but the woman would never use her money because it's not her job to be the provider. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. And if you look at it most times, a woman is more likely to get money from anywhere. Because, mm -hmm. let's say, an average 
there's always oh, let's say five guys in my inbox who's trying all to pursue you yeah. and as compared to a man a man will not be so free to ask for money from just any guy yes so for me i'm more likely to get money mm-hmm. if i wanted as compared to a man because mm-hmm. of the fact that i'm the woman and a man should be providing yes. so there are so many guys who are more willing to give me money for free yes. as compared to a man mm-hmm. and women have this man not, not that they don't have mm-hmm. but they'll be like more than it will be a person boyfriend kwani kazi yake ni gani you understand yeah. people be asking you you paid for it you mean you went out and paid for your own bill bwana yako ama boyfriend yako akiwa wapi kwani kazi yake ni gani so it's what like women do not have mm-hmm. because right now we have the aspect coming in where we are having a lot of economic empowerment for women mm-hmm. but what this economic empowerment is failing to do mm-hmm. is not just telling a woman you need to have your own money mm-hmm. what is the purpose of this woman oh, having you have her own money, money? <laughs>